it's a short read because there are several chapters um, just depends on I guess Seems like I had it every day, but nope, I'm at Chipotle. Sponsor your girl. Please and thank you. So yeah, this is a very exciting time. I'm not sure, especially with the weather, you know, I'm gonna have to battle the seasonal depression, but because this is gonna be the last heat wave before stuff <laughs> goes on a massive decline so right now currently just trying to live life in the sun before the everlasting clouds you know come at me for nine months <laughs> also random since we're on the topic of books right I am also planning, I at least, that's my goal, is to have at least one book published every month, right? Month? Oh, overzealous! What am I talking about? Every year. <laughs> I want to have a publication every year. At least one. And if there's more than one, then so be it. But this is going to be... Uh, another conceptual self-care self-help type of book and then in 2024 I plan to uh, submit something on a fictional realm and tapping into that and I'm really excited because I used to only write fictional content so it's very nice to be able to do that again and we'll see where that goes as well so that's the goal for now but let's see where this vlog ends up as well because you know me never know what the shenanigans is going to ensue in 
unfold. So per usual, come along. It's like I'm me feeling chosen, I'm locked and loaded in the zone like the model rose and I'm in the game. Praise Yah, this my father's name, he is a king, do a son, I have been saved, my sins with I'm, I'm a dance on a sea of glass, out in the throne room, if I make it, I pray I'm making my soul this day. Hey, my been of Jacob's ladder to the pearly games, I wanna see your face. Hey, all praise to the hour, could we bother go home? Picture the Messiah laid back, sitting on the throne. About to do you Look at the smile on their faces cause the Israelites is on We been gone for too long Kicked out the line, we did wrong From that man on the throne And keep commands, we was wrong Now we waking up again Now we putting away our sins Telling people to repent Cause we almost at the end And we need to come together Cause I wanna go home And we can do it cause we know we ain't alone yeah. Like I'm even chosen I'm like a Lord in the zone Like the model rose and I'm in the game Praise Yah, that's my father's name Since it's the winter time, you're gonna get a lot of ring light action from me because it's gonna get dark at 3:30 p.m. I ain't got no overhead light in my living room. I literally don't. Like, no, it is not like um saying like it's broken or anything. I literally have no light. I'm gonna show y'all so y'all can just y'all can feel for me, and I I pray that next year. The next place that I'm at because I really did decide that this is going to be my last year here because I'm tired of slumlords and this purpose, this purpose, yeah, this purpose, which I'm doing now with this vlog. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is <laughs> this place served what it needed to serve after their changing in management, they just, it's not for me anymore. It's just not. So, hold oh, please. I'm gonna turn off my dryer because I don't even know if y'all can hear that. And I don't feel like doing the whole denoising situation. I just, hold oh, please. See? No overhead light at all. And The only one I have is over there, right there, okay? And, and you low-key can't even see anything anyway with the light all the way over there. It doesn't reflect right. So, let me brighten this one more time. The better. I'm sorry, y'all. You're going to get a lot of fluorescence, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, you're going to get a whole lot of fluorescent out of me. I am so sorry. But, um, I know y'all saw the snippet of me. Well, not even of me. You Can you tell that I'm just flustered and I don't know what to freaking my head and my mouth is not commuting together? <sighs> <laughs> Get your point across as, jeez, God, Lord. Anyway, the short little snippet that I showed you just, you know, showing some scripture and, you know, feeling like I'm in a storm, but I know it's, I'm going to come out the other side. I have to keep in mind to keep pushing. It's like... There usually is like a point in time where I am very unmotivated to do things. 
and I hit that, I would say earlier this week, like this week in particular has been really tough on me. And I don't know if it's because I have been on the go for so long. Like I would say ever since the later half of the summer and now it's full on fall winter, it's like, I don't, I don't want to keep going as hard as I was. Mind you, I enjoy going out. I enjoy doing things. But my body was just like, girl, slow the hell down. What are you even doing all this for? And I feel like I was doing it because I was trying to overcompensate. Mind you, I had fun great times there's still gonna be winterized good times too hopefully I just know I was in a season where I felt and I'm still climbing out of it a lot of stuff was taken from me right a lot of work that I had to do and this is also tying into my book as well because hopefully within two to three weeks, I wanna say. Now, mind you, um, like I said before, it's the date that I do an official release is going to be way before I'm talking about it here now. So the book is already out, right? Should be. <laughs> Because <laughs> you never know with timelines and editing and, you know, I just want to be sure that the message that I wanted to convey comes across. And if anybody knows a writer, an author, any type of writer, really poetry, whatever, like you, do, you have a sense of like, I just want to keep it to myself, not like in a gatekeeping way. It's just like, I just don't want to be, you know. I don't want my material to just be not enjoyed. And at a certain point, I started to realize it was just like, girl, put it out. You have the capability to now put it out, right? So this is the book here. This is the cover of it, I should say. And it is available on Amazon right now go get you a copy mind you i don't know maybe i'll do a 100 subscriber giveaway little situation because mind you i have two books one's already on amazon i have a blank journal that people can write in in cohesion with my first book and then now my second book so i may do a little giveaway you never know i may even throw a little candle in there just, just an idea, putting it out there, you know, once I get to 100 subscribers, I may do that. So, speaking of that, mind you, if I do that at 100 subscribers, imagine what's going to happen when I get to the 1K, 10K, that sort of thing. You know, speaking into existence, because your girl is an entertaining baddie. Okay, so go ahead click that subscribe button do that bell situation follow all that good jazz you know what i mean so anyway who was i even talking about with the book correlating it with what child i lost my whole train of thought like when i tell you my brain has been real foggy just like these clouds that are outside right now I'm over it. Like, as I said before <laughs> in a previous vlog, it's just like, I don't got the tornadoes. I don't got the hurricanes. I don't got this. I don't got that. But when I tell you I got the clouds and the snow and the rain, ciao. You gonna get that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's going down. But 
with the motivation and everything else, the lack of, I should say, it's been like, writing has been something that has given me motivation on top of, you know, vlogging as well. Because as a person that just wants to have adventures and explore and have experiences, I haven't been experience driven for so long. And even prior to, you know, the time period when, in which I told you guys about, like in the beginning of my vlog journey, that I had to climb out of such a dark place. And even prior to that, I wasn't really seeking adventure. I wasn't really in an explorative type of mode. Maybe it was because, you know, I was in an area that I absolutely hated and I was getting, you know, my character ripped to shreds and falsely accused of just, just false things about my character and being falsified on a daily basis. And it was unwarranted. So climbing out of that and climbing out of an area that was so toxic, I just, I feel, <laughs> just speaking, because I told you guys this is my therapy too, like I felt so guilty recently. Like this week I started feeling guilty because I was like, I'm not doing as much as I normally do. And it's just like, girl, calm down. You, you don't have to be on the go 24 seven. And I understand that. And when I sat down writing one of my short stories for my third book, that will be in 2024, hopefully, you know, these are all tentative situations. I never know what roadblock may happen or what may, you know, occur, but that is the goal. When I was writing the short story, I felt myself releasing a lot of things. Now, mind you, I still have been very vague about how, when, what, where, and why my most recent trauma has occurred. And I still want to do a tell-all I'm just, I'm just still not sure if I want to do it in video form book form or both and I am so glad that God has given me the gift of writing again mind you I never lost it but when I tell you that thing was completely shut off of my brain for so many years it was like Starting, I want to say maybe seven years ago now, like I started writing poetry here and there, but it was never anything that I felt deemed, you know, worthy of publishing. Now, mind you, it's just on my phone, like I type it, get my thoughts out, whatever the case may have you, but it was just like, girl you have the capability to tap into such an imaginative creative space why aren't you using that skill to not only get your thoughts out but to help other people now mind you when it comes to the fictional stuff i stopped because that realm of me wasn't able to be tapped in because i had such a big responsibility I couldn't tap into it now I feel you know freer to do that type of stuff again and that gives me such excitement and I want to be able to just impact people with my writing you know I want to be able to help somebody with my writing I want to be able to you know, because only 
a few people throughout my lifetime have told me that I have impacted them for the good, but mostly it just goes unsaid. I don't know if people think that, you know, I know automatically that I impact people. Mind you, I do know that I impact people. I'm just saying it, I've always wanted to hear the affirmation from somebody, right? And it's like, I, it's a tug of war type of thing because I realize if I never get it, I hope that the good deeds that I am doing, either if someone sees it, if someone doesn't, I hope that it is counted for me, you know, on when the time comes for when I meet my maker. You know, that's what I do it for. The human side of me is like, yeah, I want to, you know, get recognized and acknowledged. But at the same time, it's my writing and me doing this is so much bigger than myself. It's like I can't not go without reverencing God and Christ because none of this would be going on if he didn't place the ideas in my head, if he didn't give me the gifts that I have and so forth. So I think that's important to really mention. And that also ties into the guilt of me feeling like I'm not motivated again. And I don't believe now talking about it I don't think that's the case, but I'm just backtracking with recapping this week. It's like, he gave you the ability to have great experiences during the rest of the summer. And, you know, he gave you a newfound energy that you know, you didn't have for years at a time. So I'm just thinking the guilt is coming from my fear of not being able to continue that when it gets severely cold outside because that has been the case for three to four years now. And it was <laughs> conditionally you know, classically conditioned in me via other people that made me feel that way, which caused me in turn to have a depressive episode during the season. So it's just like, I really just don't want to go back there. You know, I don't want other people to hinder me uh, and they can't anymore, I'm just saying it's a thing that you have to reflect on with you I'm meaning me that I have to reflect on in order to combat any kind of dwindling feelings that I have about that because when I tell you your girl fought tooth and motherfucking nail To get back to a really good place. Yeah. <laughs> like, when I tell you that it is a battle at times, but just me even rereading the book, editing, going with my, you know, person that edits stuff. Mind you, I didn't have an editor in my first book, but now that I do, I do now. Because um, my first book was kind of like a surprise to everybody, so I didn't want to, you know, spoil, spoil it or anything. But yeah, with the second book, just me rereading it, it's just like, okay, yeah, Ash, you have a lot of tools that you have personally done to be able to get back to this point in life and it's time that you release it to share your experience in real time and to hopefully help somebody else now mind you 
self-care, self-help, guidance have always been my thing. It's always been something natural within me that I have done for so long. And then it again got ripped away from me because I was getting told that I wasn't, I was getting told that I couldn't help anybody if it saved my life. Like I couldn't, you know, what else? Because I'm able to talk about it now because I healed from it because I know that's false within myself. What else was I getting told that I was... I was a cheater. I was, you know, a promiscuous being. And it was just like, first off, low mileage, proud of that, okay? Don't get it messed up. <laughs> like, that, don't touch me. <laughs> but for real, leave me alone. What are you even talking to me for? Anyway. Things like that, like really hurtful things, like um, a group of people hated me for um, making them be independent and challenging them. It was just like, what is wrong with making, guiding someone to be independent and challenging them to have a better sense of accountability you know what i mean and the very field that i was in i was practically being told that i'm not sh in it but i graduated with a 3.9 so obviously i was doing something right i was working for two universities at the same time I was doing my practicums, my internship. I was doing all of that, right? And then when the pandemic happened, it was further of, okay, you don't have the capacity to be, you know, helpful to people but people were, you know, coming to my office at the time, crying because I was leaving. It was just, it was the most confusing thing to me because like the, the people that truly mattered that I was helping was letting me know that I was impactful, but the powers that want to be, because you want to be mother, anyway, let me, let me, because I can switch that on real quick. Okay. They were so now I, I I know now that it's envy, but they were so perplexed by my impact, they hated me for it. And that that took me a long time to get over. And during this week with me reading my book and me not doing as much again, that all came back to me and I started questioning myself. It's like, okay, girl, are you even really, like, is this even worth it? Me, you know, submitting publication for my book, is that even worth it? Are people are even gonna value you and it, meaning the book, are you, even gonna be able to you know sell one copy like that is a thing of mine that you know even with my first book I was just like I gotta put it out and hopefully you know <laughs> stuff works and for the people that were in control of my life for that time period and being told so many things that you know I pretty much just needed to 
not value myself and kick rocks pretty much and it's just like I went to a point where through a point I should say I was just like okay I want to be able to heal from it effectively but there were some things that you know I just couldn't let go of at the time so with this book hopefully it's the rollout of me being able to be more transparent on what happened it's like the who was when where's and why's because <laughs> I'm gonna let you in on one example, right? Just as, I don't wanna say a teaser, but like a preview on what was happening. And it looks like my ring light is not doing too good. So I'm sorry for the dimness, but you're gonna get the ambiance anyway. Anyway, an example is one day I was in my office space and this was during the you know very early stages of the pandemic mind you I went from a position of helping to pretty much just being in the healthcare system uh, for people that were positive for I did not get any hazard pay i didn't get any type of you know extra benefits for it i was a essential person and so forth and my relationship at the time was very toxic um there was no trust there was infidelity going on um there were things that were happening to me and I was being accused of, um, such as, you know, having um, certain illnesses. And I had migraines to the point where I could not see, I could not have a light on and so forth. So all while all of this little tidbit is happening on a daily basis, I'm getting roughly three hours of sleep a night and being on call for the remainder of two, three days at a time. So whenever the phone would ring, I would have to respond to whatever situation was happening. And mind you, my, I had car issues as well. My steering wheel, my power steering went out um, and everything else. So I couldn't get from one point of the area that I was in to another. At some point, the institution didn't want to help me get back and forth. I had to be in the back of cop cars. I had to call the um, security team to be able to get me to and fro places at times. You know, dead of winter and so on. But anyway, I am in my office space and I get a Zoom call. Now, mind you, I just got back from the other part of the area that I would supervise and giving lunches to um whatchamacallit giving lunches to the people that were positive for were quarantined in a building um you know i had to wear a whole hazmat suit and so on but then i had to you know uncover mind you you know you knock on the door and you say you know food is here, whatever may have you. Anyway, let me get back to the true story. I get a Zoom call when I get back to my office space. And I get told that, mind you, I wasn't the only person. Actually, hold on, let me, hold on. It's a little brighter because of my lamp, but where was I? Because, again, hold please. That is my only <laughs> source of light in this room. I need to get a um, 
lighter bulb, but you know me, ambionic queen. But let's get back to the story. I get a Zoom call and mind you, I'm not the only person in a relationship at this time, but apparently for security purposes, I had to tell the people who I was in a relationship with their birth date, like the whole shawam, so he could get clearance to be with me in my dwelling space. Mind you, I had a living position, so whatever they said, <laughs> wit or I was gonna be homeless. And that ended up happening anyway for three months. Yeah, I was homeless for three months, but not in the way that you would think. You know, I, I had enough money for hotel rooms and stuff like that, but I didn't have a residence when I'm saying homeless. Still rough, but mentally was rough after some time had passed but back to the current story so I gave them the information and so on thinking nothing of it because one person was engaged I want to say and the other people they were married so I was mad confused but anyway some time goes by I don't even remember how much time went by but I get another zoom call for another meeting and mind you these meetings just seem to be for me for some reason I don't know if because I was the only person of color on step I don't know I don't know I, I don't know a lot of speculative <laughs> <laughs> factors that I could say were the cause but another meeting happens uh, where I get told that the person that I'm like they started breaking down my person's past to me I'm at work during a pandemic that you're making me be around and be in a building full of sick individuals meaning positive people Mind you, I would say six, seven months later, like to the point where it was, you know, I was at my last leg with it, meaning the position, I caught it myself and almost from it. Um, so that, that makes me, made me, I should say, because it's past tense. It made me, well, is it past tense? I got to be realistic with myself. It makes made me. <laughs> I'm going to put it both. Still feel very angry towards the situation that I was in because again the heinous acts against me when all I was doing was trying to help and heal people because even though my position wasn't in healthcare I turned into a healthcare person very quickly because I was considered an essential employee professional staff and when I got told pretty much 
things that I didn't even know was going on, you know, with my person, they pretty much just ran down things that they found out about this person. So you took the information that you told was needed for security purposes and like looked this person up to see if they had a past. Now, mind you, yeah, people have pests, like big freaking whoop, you know what I mean? Like, I don't understand. Like, were you, are you scared of black love? Are you scared that, you know, whatever the case may have? I didn't, I was baffled because I don't even think that's institutionally, I don't even think that's legal. So I still, I battle on even doing a formal complaint even though it's been a couple years now i still feel hurt by it because i almost almost perished because of what y'all made me do who try not to get upset and flustered with explaining but it was just that one example alone, just it, it, on top of that, it was a Zoom call. Just pretty much reading my partner for filth. And at the time, the partner's treating me like filth on top of that. So I'm like, like you, you can only imagine what type of mental situation and stage that I was in on top of me having my migraine. So when I was on the Zoom call, I could barely see the person telling me because I don't know if you know what a migraine looks like. But um, it's just, it's just like a statin i don't want to say a static he's green but like you know how you have like a severe glare all the time like in front of your eyes that's what it that's what it's like to have a severe migraine i don't know if it was because of the um certain thing that i was on at the time i don't know what the cause it could just have been extreme stress from what i was enduring during that time but yeah that's just one instance between you know a time period of pure hell and the book in a way healed a piece of that for me because even though my experience isn't as common as other because I could literally if I was to have a life have a life no if I was to able to have a movie of my life people would be like ain't no damn way ain't no way you know like the the amount of mental turmoil that I faced for no reason because I was I am but even back then, like I was so in abundance of trying to help other people and try and make them better and challenge them to, you know, be a good contributor to society. That's all I was doing. And then I get, you know, amounted to pretty much just, you are just a, you are the scum of the earth. And it's just like, how can I be scum of the earth when huh like I was I was yeah so I was really in a place of mad confusion and with my point as well because I'm gonna end it here that the only reason I believe that going through all of that 
the you know my the sickness that I was having with the stress the migraines the stomach issues the this and the that and then having the global illness that everybody had but almost perishing from it um especially with you know me going through the symptoms and everything else like I I I couldn't breathe I couldn't swallow um my ears were immense pain I had the migraines the fevers the chills the nice like I the whole gamut was thrown at me I I had the original OG strand okay and the institution they still didn't know they still don't know that I had it at the time because um before the night thing the the night thing the night sweat started happening um they gave me um a decision to leave and when I tell you that was the happiest time of my life <laughs> because it was mutual I was going to be homeless but I was already thinking about and applying for other places anyway so I really I did not care so you mean to tell me that you this institution put me through so much on top of risking me and my life with this strand of virus not only do you do what you did with the example that I told you but you also caused me to catch it which almost caused me to be not here anymore so I am definitely still kind of healing from that but we we are progressing so just want to let you know that the only reason while I am here the only reason why I turned to a better way the only reason why I'm able to still put a smile on my face to still laugh to, to still have all the gifts in the charismatic way that I am is because of God and his son Christ because when I was laying down not <laughs> my breathing capacity was damn near zero sweats like I, 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 I couldn't do anything couldn't eat I lost I think like 30 40 pounds at the time I had a it, it was a sunken face and he was like meaning God he was like you are going through way too much but I'm allowing it and if you don't stop you know trying to um, make people see you for who you are and if they don't value you things are going to get worse and you don't come to me really anyway so I'm going to show you that I am the only thing that can help you through this I'm the only thing that can help you heal from the infidelity that you were going through I'm the only I'm the only being entity the only God that can get you out of this illness can cure your other illnesses that you're going through this can go, go on and on I am the only thing that is keeping you from still being on this planet stop playing with me and turn to me and never let go again
Because when I tell you I was isolated from my friends, from my family, from, you know, friends, especially from who I knew from college that I was completely so close with. And, the, you know, all the things that I was in community-wise. And when I was telling you I was completely isolated because all my freedom was taken away from me from that institution and from the relationship at the time. I, I truly can say, sorry, I'm not trying to get choked up. I'm really not. I could truly say that God, you know, sealed me in that moment because it, to me, like my illnesses just kept getting worse. So it was just like, you know, that was the, that was, that was the one that would have, you know, knocked me out of here because I've had pneumonia my freshman year of college. I had bronchitis my junior year and then I had, you know, everything when it came to my lung capacity and everything else. My lungs are clear. I can run. I don't have, you know, shortness of breath. You know what I'm saying? Like nothing is impacted and God is the only person that can heal me and could heal me from that. Like it just crazy it's not crazy because he can do anything I'm just saying I can't fathom going through even that to the current situation I told you about and you know still be able to have a voice to even speak you know and that's why I want to continue this journey as well with me speaking on here because not only it helps me but it's because I know that I was given a second chance again to be able to use it for the better so I can't disappoint him by not doing that I cannot you know let his gift of me being a writer I can't let that just fall by the wayside. I can't just not be creative when he gave me that skill. I just can't do it because he gave me a newfound purpose to do it for him. It's not it's not me. You know what I mean? It's for him. You know? And I just hope that I'm not disappointing him. Because the amount of things that I was brought through, again, he allowed it, but it was because he wanted me to be even stronger than I already was. And that's why even, this is random, but that's why I even make candles because God gave me the idea to become a candle maker because he said, hey, I brought a certain light within you, so you have to personify that, I feel. That's what he told me. And I want to, you know, give a small... You know, just a just a little object that's tangible, that supplies happiness, that supplies light, that supplies, you know, something that helps make a home or a space just a little bit better, a little bit calmer, a little bit more peaceful. And I've always strived to live as peacefully as I can, even through the chaos. And that's why you see the title of the book in which it is, because, you know, I may bring it back, <laughs> but when I first tried YouTube, um, one of my catchphrases was, and it still is to this day in real life, that 
as you see right here, this is the corner of my couch. I just trying to be jigging in my corner in peace. I'm my happiest when I'm just in the cut. You know what I'm saying? So I just be jigging in my corner in peace. Because I, you know, when you eat, you do a little happy dance. So I'm in my corner eating, do my little happy dance. You know what I'm saying? It, the phrase <laughs> means a, like a lot to me. And I just ran with it for so long. People know me as you know the girl that just be jigging in a corner in peace <laughs> that's that's been me so um i hope that this chit chat helped you in some regard i'm sorry that it was so long-winded but i felt like it was time to really get that out especially after me going to homecoming because you know that was such a foundational point for me and it was such a great time in my life and then shortly after my life crumbled crumbled for a little bit oh and this is now the journey of me climbing back and being better than ever so if you guys could support and you know get my book uh, it will be you know in the description because mind you I don't really put things in my description really um, unless you guys want me to start to but definitely the book link will be in the description this time so I would greatly appreciate it if you could but actually my throat i feel it starting to kind of close up a little bit so i am going to stop it here and per usual i will see you guys next week we're gonna you know like i keep telling y'all we gonna have all the sides you know what i'm saying we're gonna have all the sides we're gonna get entertained we're gonna learn something we're gonna get impacted we're getting all the things <laughs> okay so until next time, take care.